Welcome everyone to the Energy Committee meeting. Um, Thank you. We have uh, four people from the committee and four people not here from the committee. Um, actually, we have five be right. because, um, yeah, I count too. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so let's see if there are any things that want to be added to the agenda before we start. So I'd like to suggest that we um, question um, whether Lance uh, still wants to be on the committee because he hasn't attended meetings or does not seem to have responded to emails and we should determine whether he still wants to be on the committee. Great. I, I think that's a good idea. And I've been thinking that about Liston too. He came to the meeting asking to sort of be let off the right. we, we talked him into staying on, but I think we should check in with him again because he hasn't been to a meeting since then. So I'll check in with both of them and see where they're at. Good. I do. I have heard of someone who is interested um, in the committee. And so if there were spots, then we could put it out to the town and, the, and see if people wanted to get on the energy committee. All right, anything else for the agenda? Do we want to uh, just very quickly um, discuss the green update uh, since it's been moved to March to uh, May 30th, uh, whether or not we want to participate yeah. in some way? Yeah, we'll, we'll put that on there too. Check in right. on the green up. Okay. So, um, Anything else? Um, I think we should put those as one and two, since we just have already started talking about them, and then move on with our the rest of our meeting. So as far as our first question, I think it's a good point to ask the two members who haven't been coming lately if they would be up for, um, if, the, if what their intentions are. And then we can move forward with making sure we have enough because we haven't had a very full group in a while, you know, so that would be great. Uh, do we want to move to do that? Does anyone want to move that we do that? I'll move. Okay. And anyone else want to second that? I'll second that. Okay. Michael second that. Uh, Thank yep. you. Thank you. Um, so anyone, everyone in favor of asking the two members who aren't here much if they'd like to stay on or not? Yep. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. Great. Thanks. Hands are good too. That works. <laughs> um, yeah, I even okay. washed mine. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one is the green up day scheduled for a second time to May 30th. Um, how do we feel about that um, as far as it being, do you know anything more, Richard, specifically about a change in plans or is it just simply, let's do the whole thing as planned that day? From what I understand, it's gonna be a limited contact event. I think the bags are gonna be distributed early for pickup. And so I don't, I don't know what uh, the Conservation Commission is planning to do, but I suspect uh, they may not be planning on doing anything. I don't really know. Yeah. It, it, I it doesn't seem that people are going to be up at that point for a, you know, a major um, fair event kind of thing with music and so on. Uh, but I'm. I don't know how the rest feel. Uh, oh, okay, uh, Carl, I see you raising a hand. <laughs> it's actually oh, adjusting it. my light, but uh, <laughs> okay, no, I, I, Richard, okay. I think you're making a good point. Um, yeah, I think they're not going to be ready for a, a full-on festival thing going on. I agree. Yep, yeah. I agree as well. Um, I as well. Okay. 
it sounds like we're we all agree to that and so i'd say we are not going to participate in prepping for an expo that day okay great um all right now more to the uh the main agenda that we started out with so th this first i want to talk a little bit about the and and richard can pipe in too because he was at the meeting um at the select board meeting uh to hear how it went with um acorn and their presentation and the questions and answers um so i'll i'll start and just say a few things um I got uh, information after the meeting that their executive session um, was pretty long. They really deliberated on what they'd heard. And um, a couple of things are, they had, uh, the select board expressed support in the project. Um, they still need a few details worked out before signing the MOU. And some of those details are, um, Bristol needs to run the latest documents by the town council and Nils who's working on the construction uh, needs to connect with Eric Coda and work out the details of the staging area and where they'll, where they'll store things by the landfill site because it's also the public works area. Um, those were the main the main things um and it turns out that nils and eric had a meeting either today or yesterday and they worked it all out and they have a good plan for for how that will work so that part is taken care of um great yeah uh so that is that's the latest that I know of. And, you know, it was definitely a good conversation and a lot of things were talked about during the meeting. And as soon as it's up on neat TV, people will be able to watch that. Anything else you think of Richard from being, being there? No, I, I was um, pleased with the general um, constructive uh, tone that everybody, um, had and and I thought it looked like they were interested and responded to the notion that it is going to be a project that's a benefit to Bristol residents and they seemed also to understand the reason for the the time rush uh, because of the PUC process and potential um, changes in rate structure uh, by the feds and also by the, the PUC in 2020. So it, you know, what could have been a, a perfect storm of, well, we can't, we can't do this. We don't have time. Instead, everybody seemed ready to do the push to move ahead. I, I was really impressed. Yeah. Great. Was anyone else there at that meeting that I didn't see because there were too many people on the screen or anything? Or was it just Richard and I were there? Is that true? We were the only two from the committee, I think. Okay. okay. Um, all right. So one of the things I want to talk about next is really um, the public education of this because uh, we've learned a lot from <laughs> And we've and the committees learned, you know, by by talking with them and hearing their presentation. And then the select boards learned a lot by having them come to the select board and and run the presentation and questions and answers and a lot of in depth. But the public doesn't really know, and so that's where we really need to work on education. And um, so I'm thinking that this this tonight can be somewhat of a help in that. And there are also um, other things that are available for people. And I'm going to say those so that if people are watching this or they listen to the neat later, they can look up things. Um, one of them is the town website, of course, and there's the minutes of the select board meetings, both April 30th and March 13th. And there are also materials on, next to the minutes there that you can look at, and those include various emails that have gone on and documents. 
Um, also neat videos of both of those meetings. Um, and let's see, also the Bristol Energy Committee meeting that happened on March 18th, there's a neat uh, video of that. Well, not really a video, it was, it was Sean's first time doing these and, and it, be, it somehow worked out to be a recording but not a video. So that recording is available and there's some really good question and answers starting at 37.45, 37 minutes and 45 seconds. Um, so that's an area to look for. And then, uh, and the newest presentation for the project is on the um, select board meeting from April 30th. So that would be the up-to-date um, presentation that people could look at. Um, and then even better than that is an upcoming meeting next week online for all residents who are interested in just learning more. And um, uh, let's see, it's to explain details of the solar project and answer questions people have. Um, it'll include a presentation and an opportunity for input. So that time and date is not set yet, but uh, it will we'll soon know and it can be, it'll probably be on the uh, website. And also I'd be glad to put it out on Front Porch Forum and we can figure out how we can get that out to people so that they can learn about what's going on. And there will be plenty of time for people to have input and learn about this because this getting the MLU signed is, is a non-binding MLU that just helps uh, the people working toward the permits and all that have that, that started because we need to um, get it in before the end of June for the, the um, solar adder reduction, you know, so that the financials still work well if we get it in by June. Uh, by the end of June. If we don't, then it's it's difficult to make it happen. Um, so, um, I'd like to start by talking about, having us talk about um, what are some of the benefits that we know about so we can just share what we know about this so far. And then what are some of the challenges that we'll need to work with. And then we'll talk more about um, you know, how we're going to help put the word out and help people have a connection to this project and, you know, be a part of it. Sally, could I ask one question just before we get yeah. to that phase? Yeah. Um, could we put the link to the ACORN PowerPoint presentation maybe on Front Porch Forum? That's a good with idea. Their, with um, their permission? Well, yes. But here's one thing. Um, they're actually creating a, another link. So they could both go out, but this educational link that they're working on right now for, for the um, group, I think we should see which is the best, gonna be the most okay. educational link. Okay. But we should, we'll definitely do that. I think that's great. Link on okay. front porch Some link, then. okay. Yeah. So um, we'll talk to Richard and see what the, uh, the most up-to-date presentation he has for the public would be great. So in the meantime, uh, do we want to include that link? What's so that? do you want to include that link on the um, the the Facebook page for the Bristol Energy Committee oh, yeah. as well, and the town yeah. uh, web page would be easy. Okay, that's that's great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so. Uh, I think we need, and I'll I'll get the 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 best link to you. So to Carl, yeah, great. Um, how is it going with the Facebook page? I don't really know how to do anything on that, so it's all you, right? Um, yeah, I check it about a week or so. Um, not much activity going on. Sure. Yeah, great. Um, and how about that, um, 
site is different than our site that's on the town website. They've, they've got yeah. energy stuff there too. Right. So, yeah, so there's two platforms going on at once. Yeah, is that is that wise or I mean, are we I don't I don't keep up with them because I'm just not that kind of a tech person. So we might need someone to keep up the the website one. I think we used to have Ian. Right. Ian, and Ian is still in charge. Of, I could ask Ian if um, it'd be okay, right and proper uh, to have another editor uh, besides him who can yeah. who can edit that town website. Yeah. Okay, that sounds good. And if he if that works, that's great. And if it doesn't, then just one of us should just be in touch with Ian really regularly <laughs> to make sure it's up to date. It doesn't look up to date at all to me last time I swung by. So could use some updates, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of updated stuff on there. <laughs> yeah. Um, great. Thanks, Richard, for taking notes. Yep. So um, I want everyone to get to be a part of the conversation so you don't feel too bored and I'm just talking away up here. So um, does anyone want to talk about some of the benefits that they are aware of of this project? Uh, Go ahead. Um, oh, yeah. So, sorry, uh, from the, the reading and the presentations, it's localized energy, um, which you know helps. We're not so much dependent on the big, huge grid. Um, it helps take uh, dependence off of the big, huge grid. Take our dependence off of the big, huge grid, and um, makes that dependence more uh, dependency more local. And it's. Uh, Following up on that, it's um, it's owned by the people who are participate in the project. They actually become owners. Uh, whoever does that, so it's you could say that the power is local. It stays in Vermont. Also, I believe that the um, Acorn told us that the renewable energy credits stay in Vermont as opposed to being sold outside the state. And one reason why that's important is that legislation right now that's uh, pending is um, going to require that we double the amount of um, energy produced within the state. Um, so this will will help in that in that goal. I think also it gives it gives people in this town who um, whose roofs aren't um, accessible for one reason or another for solar panels uh, to participate uh, and be able to generate their own their own power and it will be as though uh, they own those panels uh, that are going to be on the town dump site. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's really great. Uh, it, it's also a lot of people have trees in their yard. And even yep. if the roof is facing the south, they, they can't really get enough sun. So, and they truly do buy the panels on the, the um, proposed array. So each person would have all the benefits that owning a solar panel would have, even if it was at your house. Sally, uh, I'm, yeah. this is Stephen. I wonder, I'm wondering about um, whether more information has been made available on the, uh, you know, the economics of it from an individual participant standpoint. Okay. Um, um, because I think that is likely to be a, a real benefit for people, um, you know, setting aside the payback, at least having control over their future electricity costs, because they're going to be owning that piece of generation and not subject necessarily to the um, increases in, in the cost of electricity through the utilities. 
That's absolutely true, Stephen. And the reason that they're not talking about the cost yet is they don't know exactly what it'll be because there's so many um, expenses that go into creating it. Sure. Yeah. Um, it is indeed going to be an attractive um, price for people and and all that, but but they can't really talk about specifically what it's going to be. So as, as soon as that is known and that has to, there's a little bit of work that has to be done with um, just the whole financials of it. And then that has, it has to be um, cleared by the like director of financial something or other. I forgot what that person is, but whoever that is, it has to be cleared before you can speak to the public about the actual price. So, yeah, I see. but, but definitely it, it is going to have the benefits of owning solar and it will be attractive to people, but we can't, we don't know what that is exactly. So when, when might that become, uh, sorted out? Yeah. Um, I think, Any idea? Come, I think that's, it comes, I believe after the certificate for public good is applied for or issued, I think we could, we need to ask that question. Yeah. Um, I know on the other, the other two projects that they've done, um, the figures that they presented were significantly lower per panel than what's being offered right now by Sun Common. Um, I've gotten a quote to put more panels on my roof from Sun Common and the um, what was charged um, in uh, Shoreham was uh, significantly less per panel, uh, enough that I've put Sun Common on hold myself until I see uh, what these numbers look like for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some other interesting things. Um, these are double-sided panels. And so they are said to produce about 15% more energy because they will pick up the reflected energy. Uh, for example, when the panels are covered with snow, there's also snow on the ground and that reflected energy will be picked up from underneath. Um, and so they say there's about a 15% uh, benefit to using that kind of panel. These are much more uh, advanced and I think uh, expensive panels than what has been used so far. Um, yeah, I, I think, did, did you say they, I think that they said they're not actually that much more expensive, but they are. Or yeah, they're not, it's not like they're 15% yeah. more expensive, but they, yeah. they are a premium panel. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. Yeah. Um, just thinking that th that whole question is likely to be important to most people who might be interested. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, I th think that, that we, that we think through how we talk about that, um, and have a better better idea of when that information will be available, I think would be really helpful. Yeah. I agree. I'll put a big star by that one to check with uh, ACORN about that. Um, one of the things is I think it's best to be um, just talking about the project in general so that people understand what's going on between the select board and the energy committee and, and solar uh, I mean, ACORN. Um, and then, so the educational part in the beginning will be not including the financials, but it'll be, yeah. yes, okay. But then we definitely need to get clear about what the financials are. And then yeah. that's a, a whole different education. Yeah, that sounds um, good. Okay, great. I think we should probably depend to a large degree on um, ACORN's new uh, posting or PowerPoint or whatever it is um, yeah. so that we don't get too tangled up in the details uh, depend on their expertise will they when they present this um, will they will they actually be doing it in a presentation yes. like a zoom presentation 
Yes. Um, yes. The, the, meeting that's gonna, the meeting that's going to happen next week for the public, <laughs> any residents who want, um, will include a presentation with a lot of the elements that are in the original presentation, mm -hmm. probably just not ones that the public might not care about. And also they access to that other one, but ones that will be more, a little bit more focused on what the residents would be caring about but not as far as the financials yet. So. Um, so we need to, as soon as we get that date, we need to go on front porch forum and really let people know that if you're at all interested in joining a public co-op solar array, this is the time to go to a Zoom meeting and here's the link or here's yes. how to do it. I would say, um, if, if you're interested in learning more about the project and what's going, what the process of building a thing over here is, that's important and let them know that they, it's not going to give them the, the dollars in that first one though. I wouldn't do that. Okay. Let, don't let say them, it's not. Okay. Yeah, no, just let them present it. They're experts now on this. And I would say okay. we just stay away from that. Um, okay. Because you know it's, and and they may be able to answer some questions. They were talking about maybe giving some ballpark or something. So I think we ought to stay okay. away from that in our and any post that we make. Okay. Just, <coughs> All right. Um, and some other um, benefits. Uh, well, another is that churches and businesses in the town are also able to become owners of solar panels. And, and you know, the churches have a hard time because of tax, tax, they're, you know, they don't, they don't have as much opportunity to get a tax break or something. So um, yeah. this would give them help on their electric overtime. Um, the other is the landfill, spot is favorable uh, because of the the grade is perfect for a solar field it's facing slightly to the south and it's a big long area and it's and the other is it's not seen by any homes or any roads uh, so it's really well hidden that way um, also the size of the landfill amazingly fits a 500 kilowatt array and that price point really helps bring the cost down for the individual residents um, instead of having it a, a smaller array you know another benefit is it'll provide annual leads to the town um, keeps more local um, you know, money circulating locally. We, we kind of talked about that a little bit. Um, it really helps get people involved in creating and controlling their energy future, which is what I think what you said, Stephen. Um, you know, it helps people, yeah. Um, also, may be able to be an educational opportunity for students because they're near the array and they could have an in the school um right. thing to, that shows them what what's being generated in the array on every minute of the day another thing is i went over to i didn't go over there did a zoom meeting i felt like i was in waitsfield talking to the woman who organized the waitsfield um it's called the mad river community solar project and uh it's behind the big picture um movie place sure. and um they, uh, she organized pulling people together in the community and um, they have a similar kind of thing where they all own panels in the array and they say it's great. They're really, really appreciating it and it's producing more every year. Every, I mean, every year it's producing more than was expected. So, you know, pe people are getting more energy and it was Nils who is working with us here who worked with her on that and she said he was so great to work with so 
I feel like that's another thing about this project. We are working with such a great team of people. They're volunteers, local volunteers, uh, as far as the ACORN organization, and they're, um, uh, they're just dedicated to helping people get uh, affordable energy and have and help create a resilient economy and energy system. They will also um, manage it, I think, for the first six years, and then um, then the the owners can decide if they want to continue with that arrangement. Yep, exactly. And um, I spoke with Dottie about that in Waitsfield, and she said they, as a as community members now, they manage it and they. Um, you know, they have a good little committee who works on taking care of those things and it's working well for them. Okay. So, uh, uh, all right, I think, any uh, any other benefits that you, oh yeah, Steven? Oh, actually not a benefit. It was just a, a curiosity about okay. the A, vest, a investor um, solicitation, how that's going. Um, I have heard no returns. I, I have no definite people yet. How about you, Carl? Just curious. I, I contacted John Moyers. I left him a phone message and I haven't heard back from him. Yeah. Um, I, think that, I think that is a good segue to our next one, which is, is um, what are the challenges? And indeed, it is a challenge in this particular time right now to be talking about financial things because everyone's in an uncertain place or most people are. And so uh, finding the A investors, which are the, the upfront big investors, not the people who are buying panels, but the people who are doing it because they'll get a tax credit, um, you know, we are going to have to do some, some uh, searching for that. Mm. And, you know, it's kind of an up, up uh, headwind, <laughs> as someone mentioned at the select board meeting. The other night. It's a little bit of a headwind there. Um, but I also have talked to some people who said, oh, I'm feeling kind of bullish these days, you know. Mm -hmm. So, you know, who knows what, what people are feeling. And, and so I think some more we um, are talking about the project and people are learning about it more, you know, some people might find, find they're interested in investing in it. And I think that ACORN also has some ideas. It just seemed like it would be great if we could find Bristol people to really um, benefit from that, Bristol businesses if we can, or, or local ones. And I think the ones they're looking for are also very local. They're in Addison County probably, you know, but it'd be really fun to have Bristol businesses be a part of it. As I recall, the people in Acorn had a good response to people fearing making investments doing, you know, due to the stock market, et cetera. Right. And, and economics is not my forte by any means, but I think it was along the lines of this project, the solar project is divorced from the stock market. It, you know, it's, it's not showing the fluctuations. Yeah. Um, and so it's a, a good investment in that way. That's so true. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, it might be a really good time. Um, and I think they can basically realize their gains within six years. Yes. Um, payback. Yeah. So um, that's pretty good. Um, so the other, um, any other challenges, certainly just the challenge of putting out the word and communicating effectively at this time when it's harder to communicate. We, you know, we can't have a big gathering and talk about this together. Um, so that is a little challenging. And, and also people are home. So maybe it is helpful that maybe it is going to be easier in some ways to have a meeting online. Some people it won't work online. So that's a challenge. Could, yeah, well, could, uh, uh, one of us could do a, an email, a little personal email campaign to 
people on their email list who might be interested in this. Yeah, yeah. I like that. And also um, a press release maybe for the yeah. an independent. Mm -hmm. Yep. I assume people are still reading the newspapers. Yes. Yep, they are. Um, I think anything we do of this nature, we should run by ACORN. Press releases and that kind of thing. Have them vet them. Yep. Um, Sally? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, talking to ACORN is a great idea. And because they've done this a number of times, they probably have some pretty good ideas about community involvement mm -hmm. and methods of reaching out uh, and uh, making communities aware of the possibilities. Yeah. Great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, the other, the other thing that is something is is really getting it um done by that date because that that's going to make all the difference too so yeah but that's not about peop um that's not about getting people on board for for buying panels or anything it's just getting the paperwork done by then but that's mainly what acorn's doing so with the select board and that kind of thing um, all right. Um, I know other uh, other organizations are very interested in what's going on here. Um, I've been in contact with uh, Rob Kidd at the Sierra Club, and he wants to be kept uh, up to date on our progress and how we're doing. I That's think, great. You know, this this is the kind of thing that could be really employed around the state. Yeah. I agree. I was at a meeting at in Middlebury at the regional. Well, again, I was on my, it was at home. It was my Zoom, but I feel like I'm going to these meetings. <laughs> um, it was with the uh, um, Climate Economy Action Center advisory group. And they, um, they kind of, I met, met them through the Addison County Regional Planning Commission. And uh, they're, they were really excited to hear about it. You know, they, they, they want to keep learning about this. And um, yeah, I think, I think it is something that is, is really, and the other, the other thing is the Shoreham Project and the one in Waitsfield filled up like that. You know, it just, people it's a it's a good deal for people to own solar so i think once they're you know once they're all the work of the permitting and all i mean it's a lot of work acorn's putting in all this volunteer time to help this happen because they believe it's a great thing and it is it's so helpful right now that's another thing it really helps the state move toward its goals of um, renewable energy well you were saying that richard too Sadly, kind of riffing on what Mike said. Um, so we're waiting to hear about a day and a time for this meeting that's occurring next week, was it? Yep. Okay. And um, I'm wondering if uh, ACORN and the good people in Waitsfield might have some pointers for us about how do we market this? Yes. Um, and if we can take their pointers and use the that to craft the emails they're gonna send out to friends and family about this. I wonder if that might be a strategy. Yes, that's great, Carl. In fact, that is something we talked about yesterday when talking to the folks in Waitsfield. And um, the, the main thing she did, Dottie, who kind of pulled people together, was reach out to all the people she knew who really cared about renewable energy, and clean environment and climate change and you know all the people who really it's in their heart to move toward a more um, sustainable future and those are the people who 
had energy for it and were excited about it and helped it, it move along. And that makes sense. Okay. And there are a lot of people around like that who, who care about it. So would it be helpful if, um, what was the name of the gentleman from Acorn who we talked to? Okay, we, we talked to a few, Peter and Rich. And Rich was the one who gave the presentation. Right. Rich Carter. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Um, so would it be fruitful if I contacted Rich at Acorn saying we have a public meeting coming up, can you throw us some bullet points that we can use to get people interested in attending this public meeting? That's a good idea. And if you want, I can do that because I'm emailing back and forth with them a lot, unless you're really wanting to. I know you're super busy, but if you want to do it, go for it. But I'm, um, I'm happy to yeah. do it because I can. Done. What's that? I'll go ahead and do it. That's fine. Okay. Great. Great. So, uh, Rich Carpenter. Yeah. Great. Thank you. And the other, the other thing is, um, Peter is really the one who uh is like the secretary I'm, I'm just trying to be careful because rich has a million things in his life going on okay. and so you might want to do it to peter and rich so that because peter is the official secretary kind of connection communication person for them okay what's his last name uh peter carruthers c-a-r-o-t-h-e-r-s okay I have those emails if you want. So if you can forward those to me, that'd be great. Yeah. Okay. It kind of sounds like maybe you're suggesting to start with Peter rather than Rich. I think um, it might be might be good. I mean, I should ask them because I, I see that they they have a certain way they do it. You know, like they have Peter do most of the things, but I could ask them and just see where they're at about that. Okay. If they like a one person reaching out, one person is a spokesperson, because I know they're very busy people. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I'll send you those two emails and I will check with them to see who the best person is to connect with about that. Great. Or, or I'll just give you the emails. Either way. Yeah, let, let um, I'll send Carl. Let Carl ask him. Yeah, yeah. Be, I'll just send you the yeah. emails and you yeah. talk about it. You talk. That's yeah. great. Yeah. I like that. Yep. Great. Um, I think we also need to get the um, this out to, I mean, when I was talking about people who were into renewable and all that, I was kind of more meaning the people who were, we'd be um, trying to get interested in buying panels, but there's still more community members who want to know what kind of, what's going on with this project in town. And that's the first thing we need as far as uh, public awareness is, I'm just thinking of this because, and the select board is, you know, sensitive to this because when they were doing a big energy project, the pipeline, people came and said, hey, we didn't hear about this. What's going on? So that's what we what we need to take care of right now is like people, a big project happening in town. What's, why aren't we hearing about it? So I think that's an important part of it. So um, we're going to be posting notices on Front Porch Forum. And I wonder about also on the town website, yeah. upcoming meetings. Yeah. But I think you may I, want, we may want to ask Val about that, if they have any thoughts about um, ways in which we can make sure that people feel that they've been given the opportunity uh, to ask questions. Um, you know, Val and the select board might have some thoughts about about that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that is. I think, a, I think a, a Zoom meeting is a good idea. Um, 
Well, it's really tough because probably there are a lot of people who don't, who have not gone on Zoom. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I wonder how we get the word yeah. to them. Um, do we, you know, would it make sense to have some kind of a handout that could be picked up somewhere? Yeah. Or put it on the side of our vehicle so people can read it as we go by. <laughs> But, but yeah, my well, I whenever I direct a play, my wife berates me because I, I, she says that every time I talk to someone, they say, "Hey, Carl, how's it going?" I should immediately start with, "Well, I'm directing this," and just and bend their ear about it. And she's gone to the point of even little paper slips to hand out about it with the you know the day and the time and, and all that stuff. Uh, social distancing that's a little more difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just. Um, I always start with like the impossible perfect and then move backwards from that. Um, and I had this vision of at the, um, uh, at the landfill, uh, you know, the old dump where people, everyone goes on Saturday and there's a big huge sign that people would see as they drive up like almost billboard size of, that says possible future site of um, Bristol solar array or whatever we're gonna call it and, and, and have handouts available there people take a little informational leaflets about what it's all about. Um, I think that could get the word out. Yeah. So, um, it's great. In, I so could info make, right at the dump site. I could make something up and have it printed at, um, Kimball's, uh, a sandwich board type thing that would, that would post that notice possible future site. Um, and then, we could take turns being there during the morning on Saturday and hand stuff out. Mm -hmm. I yeah. think again, we need to see what it is we want to hand out. Absolutely. I think that will, I think we'll find out some of that maybe from Rich and that acorn cause they're working on that type of thing right now. And they're working on a, a bigger presentation, but what are the takeaways that need to be shared? What if we put up a post, a sandwich board this Saturday that says possible future site of Bristol co-op solar project, watch front porch form for details. Yeah, that's right. Right. As a first right. step. Forget, right. I see what you're saying. Just basically saying this is something so that people start recognizing that something's going on. Yeah. yeah. I get what you're saying. Subsequent weeks, we could hand stuff out. I don't know. What do you all think about that? Does it make sense? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I'll do that. Thank you. you know, this, this uh, Mike here, this may be a stretch, but in thinking about <clears throat> what organizations are communicating with large numbers of people in our community, I think of the school system and you know, in the midst of all of this and the, uh, you know, the, the digital uh, instruction that's going on, uh, is there, does the superintendent uh, do, does the high school, is there any form of uh, general ongoing communication with families? Obviously teachers are communicating with their respective classes, but I wonder if there's some, and again, I, I don't know even if it existed, whether, whether it would be appropriate to put this kind of information into that stream, but um, just a thought, just a thought. Yeah. Um, I could check with Patrick. Um, I was on a meeting with them last night and I never <clears throat> occurred to me then, but I could check with, the school board or Patrick, that, that group, the community ed, community engagement group of the board and Patrick. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if they would want to do that or not, but I could check in and see. Um, there's, um, there's a vacation coming up and people will be going to this, to a different, two different schools to pick up lunches and breakfast and lunch maybe. And uh, 
there will be a lot of people there at those times. It might be something as long as we some somehow made it not a school thing, but we were just where there are a lot of people. Maybe I could see if that would work all right. Well, there aren't they um, distributing lunches by bus right now? Yes, they I mean, are. Yeah, I mean, it's. I don't know if that'd it, be any different. Well, it's it's different in that people would be coming to one place. So if we had a board there, they'd be coming by it. The other is they're going around and dropping lunches off. Right. So, it, you know, the, the school then will be more like the dump. It's one place. Uh, so if you want to check if we could put a sandwich board out by the school. Okay. Are you thinking of the, where are the lunches being picked up, do you know? Um, I think it's maybe Beeman and Mount Abe, but I'm not positive. Okay. Well, if we could put a sign out there, that'd be great. Maybe one in front of um, Holly Hall. Yeah, now that would be the most appropriate right there. Mm. Right there. Okay, so I'll get a, I'll get a couple of poster size things made and some way to jam them in the ground and stuff, and we'll put them around. All right. Um, are you okay with uh, either you, if you want, check with Rich and Peter? I don't know. Do do we need to ask about what we're calling it, or do we just go with it? Landfill solar or community Bristol community solar. What I was going to what I was going to go a uh, possible future site of Bristol Solar Three because its title I think is Solar Three. Yeah, I think the the fact that I think not calling it Bristol Solar Three because that might be confusing. I mean, it's AES Three, but for the Bristol, it's just their their first thing. So I I wouldn't say three in it. Maybe um, you know Bristol uh, Solar it, Field. I would I would call it a community solar Bristol Community Solar oh, Project. Okay. Because that that okay. explains more yeah. what it really is. Okay. And, and the other is we're not actually going to be on the site. So I'm a little concerned about saying that even if we're standing by the end of Pine Street, you know what I mean? No. It, okay. I, I don't know. Instead yeah. of saying could be possible site, that only works if we're at the landfill, on the landfill. Right. So maybe- well, I, was, I was envisioning it as you're driving into the landfill, you do the UE, you know, and then you drop off. So like right where, where you used to drive down into the landfill, you know, that yeah. road that goes down, of yeah. having a sign right there. Okay. Well, yeah. the problem is that they often block it uh, with their trucks and stuff. What if we were to say, um, just determine uh, something to the effect of um, the former Bristol dump site is now the possible site for a community solar project. Yeah, I think Something that's- that effect. Yeah, I think um, the other, yeah, I think um, saying something like, yeah, community, community solar project on landfill, you know, just saying that um, possible, yeah, something like that. Okay. I think whatever um, name we choose now, we really need to stick with it. Because if yes. we change it later, it'll really that, cause yeah. confusion. I feel like we do need to be careful with this and not just do it right away. Let's keep let's keep talking about it maybe over email and get a little bit of input okay. from from the Acorn as well. Yeah, I'd feel better about that because right. whatever we do is going to be needs to be it's the you know it needs to be really right on. What if we were to put up um, a sign that would say? Um, watch for front porch forum information regarding uh, Bristol solar project for right now. 
uh, we don't have don't have to give it a name or community solar project. More info, I, I think, more info soon more on info, Front Porch Forum. Yeah, yeah. I I think that's pretty good, and also I'd I'd say town website too. I think let's just because some people like I don't look at Front Porch Forum. How am I going to find out about it? But then they're stupid. <laughs> you know? I mean, you have to be really. I don't know. Front Porch Forum is so um, useful. I can't imagine people just refusing to look at it. There are a lot of people who don't, and I think we need to wow. be aware of that and be let do as best we can to get everyone to see it. I think yeah. I think it it's going to be one of the many things that ways people learn. Okay. Can I? Can I? You know, we're as we um, work on the, how to phrase this. I almost think um, less is more. Mm -hmm. And saying something like, right there at the dump at the entrance, you know, you're going to get people's attention. We don't have to like direct. I don't think direct them down the hill to the dump, but if you just said proposed site of Bristol Community Solar Project, visit wherever. Yeah. I mean, people are, I think it. it's just simple, um, no confusion, you know, and if they're wondering exactly where it's going to happen, that might even motivate them to go look yeah. Yeah. and see where it is. <clears throat> I, think, I think that's um, wise, Mike. Yeah, that's good. Great. Thanks everyone for hanging in there on, uh, you know, that it's hard, it's hard to figure these things out, but it's, it's great yeah. we had five of us on it. <laughs> so let's say watch Front Porch Forum and the town website. Yeah, yeah. Or, you know, you could just say the, say the stuff and, you know, yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you so much. That's good, Mike. <clears throat> um, let's see. Must be eight o'clock. Yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I guess um, that that's probably good for now on communication and that kind of thing. Maybe we could hear from Stephen a little about window dressers. Do you feel like we're enough, have spoken enough about this project already? About the solar project? Or yeah, I mean, for right now? Or no, the window, to... window dressers. Yeah, yeah, so we, do you want sure, to? I can tell you what I know. Um, I received an email from Laura Seaton, she's the director at Window Dressers. And basically everything's on hold right now for them. And they have essentially three scenarios that are possible um, for what, what will happen next year or for, for this, this year, this coming year, ranging from um, in the worst case, uh, the um, the virus is not controlled. There's no um, uh, there's no there was there's no medical uh, what's the word vaccine available. There's no treatment available by say fall, which is somewhat likely that there won't be. I guess. Um, in which case they would probably just um, cancel the program for, for this year. Mm -hmm. um, if, on the other hand, a vaccine or some treatment or, or, the, or the virus just um, recedes, um, then they might consider a limited, a limited program um, for this fall. Um, 
Yeah, really, it's two, it's two scenarios. Those are the two scenarios that we can say are realistic. One is a limited program this fall, and the other is uh, nothing this year. Um, they will be making a decision um, in mid-June. So until then, we, we just aren't going to know. And um, they've also made clear that no one should be out there measuring windows. Yeah. So, which is kind of goes without saying, but, but that's what we've got. Um, uh, I'm sure I'll get more information as it becomes available and I'll pass it along. Mm -hmm. Great. Thanks, Stephen. Sure. Uh, is anyone have any other uh, thoughts to say before we wrap it up? I, I just wanted to mention that I'll continue if it's if it's useful to send summaries from some of the webcasts that I've been going on, uh, just so you have a sense of what's going on in regard to the state legislature, particularly. Um, there was an interesting webcast uh, regarding the rollback of the of the federal uh, cafe standards and some of the other environmental laws, and um, that was um, talked about by a representative from Greenpeace and one from um, oh um, boy I've blown off uh, who he was representing, but um, we really have to. Um, keep our ears tuned because there may be some some chinks in the legislative process where um, our voices could really make a difference uh, in between coronavirus yeah. issues. Um, Mitzi Johnson has indicated that she is um, still wanting to pass the Global Climate Solutions Act, that it's a priority, which is really good news. Yeah. And uh, and Tim Ash is um, very passionate about some, maybe not an individual bill, but tacking on uh, language to uh, another bill that would require uh, the governor to sign on to the TCI MOU if New York and um, Massachusetts sign on. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is that our gas prices will go up by the um, by the amount that's decided per gallon, um, regardless of whether we are partners, yeah. because New York and, and Massachusetts are uh, where most of the gasoline comes from. And so they're not going to give us a cheaper rate. It's just going to all be this higher, this higher mm -hmm. rate and we won't get the benefit. So it really, it really, one of the biggest arguments is it's, it could happen anyway. Uh, why not benefit from the money that's going to come back? Yeah. So we need to, I'll keep sending that stuff and you may see a um, kind of a, an urging to contact, uh, particularly right now, Governor Scott. In fact, you can, uh, one of the best things we can be doing right now is handwriting letters or you know sending via mail letters to governor scott uh urging him to to support the global climate solutions act and then kind of give your reasons for that and i can send you some talking points that you could put in that letter uh that deeper prepared that'd so be great i'll do that thank you thanks richard yep Uh, anything else anyone has to would like to say? Uh, in a shame I enjoy the meeting. <laughs> so I enjoy. I'd rather be in person with you folks, but this has been this has been great. This yeah. Been great. I I think I I just flashed you know to the fact that normally this time of year I'm not here. I'm in California mm -hmm. and. Uh, it, it would be, you know, going forward, if I find myself there, this is a, hopefully an option that remains for those of us who can't be physically present uh, to attend a meeting. 
Yeah. Great technology. Yep. <clears throat> Speaking of great technology, there's a shameless uh, self-promotion. The Bristol Gateway players have started doing race uh, since we can't get together as cast. So we've recorded our first one last week using Zoom. And we're, we'll have it on the, the Gateway players um, Facebook page for people to access. Great. Maybe put it on Front Porch Forum, too, for those yeah. of us. Yeah, we're just we're going to shot it. Great. Yeah, great. Great. Well, thank you all. This has been great. Really appreciate the discussion and um, yeah. I move to adjourn. All right. Second to form. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Thank you. All right. Everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Everybody good night. stay well. Yes. yes. Great.